Hi everyone and welcome back to the Warthog Project. Today I'm going to be filming um, part two of the video on how much this simulator setup costs. Um, before you watch this video, make sure you go back and watch part one and you'll see how we got to the grand total of this actual physical cockpit right here. Um, the total was $4,211.66. Okay, so this video has got the same disclaimer as the last one. Nobody sponsored it. Um, all the products that I'm listing are just ones that I found myself uh, and nobody's told me to say good things about them. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so one of the peripherals you'll need will obviously be a set of MFDs. I'm using Thrustmaster Cougars. These are designed off an F-16 MFD, so they're smaller than an A-10s and I had to add this um, rotary day-night off switch. Um, so these are $128.25 for the pair of them. Um, that's brand new. Now you don't have to use these if you don't want to. If you're going to the problem of making your own panels, you could probably easily make your own MFDs. And all I do plan on it is a prototype. Um, so I am going to be replacing these that's why I cut a larger hole in my main instrument panel. I could have just cut the smaller hole to fit that, but this is actually a bracket that's just press fit in there for now, because my plan is to replace that with the much larger A10 sort of area. So another one of the um, main peripherals is obviously going to be your HOTAS setup. Thrustmaster Warthog. I don't see why anybody would make an A10 cockpit and not use a Thrustmaster Warthog um, throttle and joystick setup. Uh, these ones go brand new for $550 uh, on eBay. Most stores sell it for that price. Um, I didn't pay that for mine because I got this second hand off eBay. I think I paid about $350 for it a long time ago. This was probably the, this was the first thing I bought when I got into flight sims. Um, I'm also using a Verpal extension. You can see down here, this is a 100mm extension. It comes with the cable. They are... $38.85 for that. Um, gives you a, a longer throw on the stick and it just feels a lot better than um, pivoting it down here, if you know what I mean. Okay, so the rudder pedals I'm using are Simped F16s. These are an old rudder pedal. They were high end back in the day, but the company went bust and they don't make them anymore. Um, and by today's standards, they're not that high end anymore. Um, they were $250 I paid for them second hand on eBay. Um, the seller never mentioned that they were broken, but they were when they arrived. I actually updated them. I ripped out the electronics and replaced them with a Leo Bodner card and a new hall sensor, and I fixed up the toe brakes. The toe brakes on them were these weird pressure sensitive switches. You basically had to stamp on them with your full body weight to get the, rudder, the toe brakes to activate. So I just replaced them with some um, limit switches to make it a bit easier to use the brakes. So the sound system I'm using is a Logitech Z550 uh, 5.1 channel. Uh, I've had that for probably 10 years now. Uh, that was, you can get them online nowadays for $180. I don't think I paid that because I bought it new, but the $180 I'll budget for that. Um, it's 5.1 channel and all the speakers are actually mounted behind the screen. So you can't see any speakers. They're behind the screen facing sort of down and towards the floor. Um, my plan is to eventually mount the speakers on the roof or in the ceiling, but um, I haven't got around to that yet. Uh, okay, so sticking with the sound profile, there's also a Butt Kicker Gamer 2 um, in the seat, mounted to the side there. The Butt Kicker is a transducer, so it vibrates the seat with sound. Um, you can get them for $250. You can see the amp for it is just there, and the um, remote control is mounted just... Um, up underneath the instrument panel there. Okay, so for those peripherals that I just explained all combined, so for the Cougar MFDs, the Warthog, the Verpal Extension, the rudder pedals, the sound system, and the butt kicker in the seat, uh, total cost for all of those peripherals combined was $1,397.10. Okay, so now that you know the price of all those peripherals together, I'll add them on to the total of the actual physical cockpit, which we got from part one of this video. So that was $4,211.66. So all up together, the subtotal to make the physical cockpit itself with all the peripherals to run it to a computer is $5,528.76. That's the 
simulator as you see it right now without the displays. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll go into the display setup that I'm using. Okay, so the projectors I'm using for this screen are BenQ 1080 STs, two of them. They're actually two different models. One's a BenQ 1080 ST and the other one is a BenQ 1080 ST Plus. Um, which is a shame because I had to stuff around a lot because the plus is a bit brighter. So to get the images to blend, it was a lot more work. Um, so I bought these ones. So the first BenQ I had was not actually for this project. It was just for my home theater room. Um, so I paid a lot of money for that because I bought it brand new. They're a discontinued model now. You can get them for cheap every now and then on eBay. Um, I actually got the ST Plus, which is the better model for $350 on Gumtree. Um, some bloke was selling it and all I needed to do was replace the the lamp which was $30 I found one on online and I repaired it myself and it's working perfectly. Um, so you can get there, I've budgeted in this video that they are $650 each. Um, that's about what you can find them for on the second hand market. Um, so for the two of them I've budgeted $1,300. Um, so you can go out and buy the new BenQ model which is the replacement for this but it'll be $1300 for one projector and as far as I can tell the stats are about the same they're still 1080p they're still short throw lenses they're basically the same in a new, in a new case as far as I can tell um, so you're better off probably hunting down these ones um, until 4k projectors drop drastically in price I don't plan on upgrading these at all um, they, they do the job perfectly for when you're blending the two images like this because it's two 1080p images it's basically a 4k image now it's two two 1080p images side by side um, and I think you'll agree that it looks fantastic um, even when you're up really close to the image you can make out like if you look at the edge there but this is three centimetres away from it, you know what I mean? Your eye level is about here. So you can't really see that. Like you're gonna get you're gonna get screen door effect. It's just the nature of of um stretching an image this large. You can't get a, a 1080p image and stretch it out over four four meters and not expect it to get a little bit pixelated. But I think it looks pretty good. So the mounts I'm using. Obviously, I've stuck them on the ceiling and routed the cables up through the ceiling. Um, the mounts I'm using are the cheapest ones you can get on eBay. Uh, $19.99 each, so I spent $40 on both of the mounts. Uh, and they do the job fine. My other video, you would have heard me mention that I think the mounts were moving because every time I'd have to recalibrate the image. I've since realised that that's the projectors doing that, not the mounts. The mounts do move, but so little that it doesn't become an issue. So basically, um, after speaking to a few people on some forums, the key is to start up the simulator, or start up the projector, sorry, and just let them idle for 30 minutes so all the heat in there and the lenses can get in the right position and then sure enough, after 30 minutes of just idling, this, the two images will be aligned perfectly. So that was the key. Just don't touch it, stop fiddling with it. Story of my life. Okay, so another cost, obviously I have mounted the projectors on the roof there. Um, I had to buy really, really long HDMI cables because they go up through the ceiling, down through the wall. They actually go down through this cupboard and then along the floor here, this is temporary, I will put them through the wall eventually and then to the computer. So they were 15 meter long HDMI cables. Uh, I got them for $32.99 each on eBay and so I spent $66 on HDMI cables. Uh, the power for these projectors is from a power outlet that's in the roof um, so I don't need any special cables for that I had a power point already up there for the air conditioner the air conditioner is actually mounted above this room so it was very easy for me there was already a power outlet up there I just had to run the cable up to it okay so the screen um, if you want to see how I built that and how much it costs just head over to this video right here you will see that it cost me $137 to build this projection surface. Um, I do have the capability to extend it if I want to. So this is a 180 degree screen at the moment. So I have made another section of it so I can turn it into a 270 degree display. It's pretty easy, it's all modular, it just bolts straight on. Uh, so if I ever need, if I ever want to get another projector, 
I can get 270 degrees. I haven't done that yet for the simple reason that this room is too small. Um, it will take up every single part of this room. There'll be no room to get in and out other than to squeeze past the console and seat and sit down in it. Um, still trying to talk my wife into that one, but I'll let you know how I go. The other problem is um, my video card, which is a 1080 Ti, uh, will only support as many monitors as it's got now. So if I was going to put another projector, I'd have to lose probably the CDU screen, um, which is not an issue. I just need to find another way to export that data, probably using a Raspberry Pi or something like that. Um, so if I can get that displaying, not using a video out and just using a Ethernet cable or something, maybe I will one day, see what happens. The Fly Lease software is fantastic, however, it is very expensive. So I was using the trial version for a long time and you just, you can still use it, however, you get a big watermark across the screen. Um, for me to buy the license to get this running as you see it today, it cost me $799 just for that Fly Lease software. So it's a big hit to take, but I bought the most expensive license you can, which comes on a USB dongle, and then you can put that into any computer and use it basically forever. I get to keep it. For half that price, you can buy a PC locked version, which obviously locks to your PC, and then um, if you want to upgrade hardware in the future, you just have to buy another license. But if you've got a dedicated computer to running a flight sim, I don't suppose that would be an issue. Um, I up update hardware a lot, so I didn't do that. Um, you can also buy different licenses to do different things. So I bought the top of the range license. Um, it can actually blend 16 projectors, um, the version I've got. So one day if I go full dome crazy and use 16 projectors, I can do it. Um, there's a cheaper version that can only lock two projectors. Um, even that's probably half, that's probably $250. So if you're on a budget, you can do it a bit cheaper, but I wanted the best license so I can upgrade in the future. Um, so that's $799. Okay, so the total cost to get this screen running, being the cost of the projectors, the cost of the mounts, the cost of the cables, the cost of the screen, and the cost of that fly lease software, was $2,342. So, expensive, yes, but less than buying three um, large big screen TVs, I suppose. So you could you could do this without projectors and have an LCD screen, but to get the two hundred and seventy degree, uh, sorry, the one hundred and eighty degree wrap around, you'd need three of them. So less money than that. Um, I'm, pro I'm probably just trying to justify it to myself, but. At the end of the day, you don't need to have this projection screen if you're building a sim pit. You can you, you can push this in front of a TV and it'll still be awesome. You can build this and use a VR headset. Um, not much point really because you're making all this cool stuff that works and then you can't see it with your headset until they um, sort of advance the whole mixed reality a little bit better um, and the pass-through that's starting to come through on the VR headsets now. That'll be cool when that works out and I'll probably go that route um, a few more generations when they've sorted that out. Well, so here it is. We're at the grand total of the entire setup as you see it right now. Um, the grand total being the cost to build that, the cost to add all the peripherals, the cost to have the projectors and the screen was $7,870.74 Australian. So a couple of things you have to understand about that price. It sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. Um, you just have to understand that I didn't just go out and drop that coin in one lump sum. So I've spent that amount of money over the last five, nearly six years now, and in little bits. Like I, I um, would build one panel over a couple of weeks and drop 50 bucks on it, and then a couple of weeks later drop another 50 to build another panel. I also build it in stages, so... I originally just had the main instrument panel and nothing else and then uh, it was just with a normal seat and a normal computer monitor and then I upgraded and did the consoles on their own and then added the seat and then I later added the screen and the projections set up. Um, so it's, it's evolved over time. Um, put into perspective, that amount of money is less than what I spent on my phone bill over that time period. Um, so I can already tell that you're all saying, what about the PC, what about the PC? So I've left the price of the PC out for a couple of reasons. Um, one being that it's, it's a massive variable. So you can buy a 
$5,000 PC that will run DCS and will run this exact setup. You can buy a $1,000 PC that can run DCS and run this exact setup. Uh, my old PC, which was five years old, was running this until not long ago, until I updated that old one, that one. The other reason I left that price out is because I'm assuming that if you are building something like this, you've probably already got your own computer. You're probably already a DCS fan, and you're probably already flying it. You've probably, realistically, already got a HOTAS set up and rudder pedals. I just want to stress that this computer here is not solely dedicated to this rig. I frequently unplug it and it spends a lot of time in another room hooked to another display and I just use it as a gaming PC really. If I was building a computer for this setup, specifically, I had the funds, I'm just gonna build a dedicated DCS computer, I would not choose one like that. I would um, spend less money and I would change some hardware on it. I would probably spend more on the CPU and less on the GPU and I would do a whole bunch of different things. Maybe if I get the funds one day I'll do that, but it's a pretty good setup the way it is now. Um, that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching. Um, stay tuned, I'm gonna do one more video about the costs of this setup. Um, I'm gonna go over how to actually save money and some of the lessons I learned. So the next video I'll actually be taking money off the total. Thanks very much to all the new followers who have come along. I've noticed the YouTube channel sort of taken off a little bit in the last couple of months. I'm um, getting a lot more views, so thanks for that. Stay tuned, there will be more videos. I'm going to be doing a whole video on making my new MFDs, and I'm also going to be upgrading the um, SLU sensor in the Warthog throttle. Uh, thanks very much for watching.